Hey everybody, CVH here, and in today's video we're going to be playing some Rothgar Forge Archer on the ladder. This is Corey Milhouse's exact deck, uh, he's been having a lot of fun with it recently, and it looked like a ton of fun to me too, so that's exactly why we're going to take today's video and just give it a shot on the ladder and see what happens. Rothgar Forge is a really fun card. This particular list I don't think needs much of an introduction, because this is the exact same list uh, that Corey did a video on for Between the Lanes that's on this very channel just a couple videos back. So if you're looking at this list and you're wondering why any specific cards are there, Hint, hint, spider worker. Uh, I'm just going to leave that to him. Feel free to check out that video. I'll make sure it's linked at the end of the video, and I'll also put it in the description if you just can't wait and you want to check it out now. Should be down there. Uh, so definitely watch Corey Milhouse's deck tech on this Rothgar Forge Archer, which is entirely his creation. But let's have some fun with that on the ladder. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and stay subscribed for more Legends content. Follow my stream in the description. I'll see you next time. The lucky lady, huh? I think we're going to have to be pretty lucky if we want to. Get some sick Rothgar Forge action going on. It is a pretty RNG dependent card. So that, that does concern me slightly as someone who is never lucky. Against Warrior, I think I'm just going to keep both of these for some early defense against Orcs. I'm just going to assume that's something we could be up against. I guess Pet's kind of a questionable keep, but we do have the ring. I guess we are looking for card draw as well. Yeah, like I said, I'm kind of going into this blind. I've seen his deck tech and I've seen other Rothgar Forge decks. Even played a bit of Forge but I haven't played this particular exact version at all yet. So we're just going to go in and uh, hopefully have some interesting games. I definitely expect they will be interesting at the very least. Whether or not they'll be successful is another, another thing entirely. I feel like we should keep our ring charges if we don't need to use them, because we are playing some high-cost cards like the Forges and the Baronesses. Like it might, in fact, be orcs. If I fall, the hist will me. Just gonna try to aggressively clear things as soon as possible. This deck does have a lot of ways to gain life, though, between the giant bats and the snake tooth necklaces. Together, orcs. So I'm not too concerned about the matchup yet. One of the first interesting turns, I think I'm going to use my ring charge here and either go for giant bat in the left, gambit it over, ping that, and then attack that and keep this 2-2 alive against his 3-2, or we could just play cliff racer and have the 4-1 cliff racer and the 2-2 surviving. I think I'm going to go with that and save the bat. It would be nice to use that with forge, more so than the cliff racer because cliff racer doesn't have drain. Might take a little bit of extra damage here, but uh, I think saving the gambit and getting the bat potentially some forge value is better. I don't expect he's playing Sharpshooter just got a rapid shot to punish my 4-1 here, but that would be unfortunate. But he does have breakthrough on all of his orcs right now. Been too long since I've embraced my rage. It doesn't help any of his orcs on the board trade any better. I assume he might just be going to face here. Spider worker. <laughs> And it was at that moment that our opponent had no idea what was going on. Oh man, that was going to be our next prophecy. No! No, Brotherhood Slayer. Okay, Brotherhood Slayer would have been better for free than Spider Worker there. Oh no, another Spider Worker. Alright, now what? We have, we have the trades to clear if we want. I think it's also somewhat important that we kill that though, so... I might just Gambit. Gambit my pet, bring it over to the left to ping that off. Then I can trade and also play Giant Bat to clear. I keep the pet alive, it's just in a sort of a weird lane right now. I mean, I could not play the bat, I could just play the slayer, but I don't know. I think I'm, I'm feeling the pressure right now, so... I'm gonna go ahead and clear. Prevents a wood orc on her from getting me next turn. I think we can hit him down to 26, that should be fine. For the glory of the Gortwag, oh my god. You don't see this in many, many orc decks. Most uh, actually have taken it out because it's a little bit too slow and usually gets answered immediately. The funny thing about that is, 
is that right now we cannot answer it immediately. So we're kind of just sitting here waiting for it to get value. We can guard against it now. That was a pretty good draw. I think I'm going to draw with this first. Oh, man. If only I had one more Magicka. <laughs> or if I had had that instead of that. That would have been a better draw than Fighter's Guild. The Rapid Shot Leaf Licker combo. Everything is like one card off. You know, that was one card too far down. Brother Slayer was one card too far down. Yeah, unfortunate. Sometimes it works like that, though. I'm just going to put everything in the right, I think. I could put a uh, Brotherhood Slayer in the left. Yeah, Brotherhood Slayer can go left. I'm gonna try to guard against it. I'm not gonna give him a card here. And if the guard fails, which it likely will... Oh, Artisan, that's interesting. I don't see that in a lot of Orc decks either. They usually go as red as possible for Mighty Ally. He's buffing that, which makes me think he doesn't have a way to bypass this 1-2. So hopefully that trade just happens, saves me some work. But if not, we can trade that in and Leaf Lurker, we could use Rapid Shot if we want. Rapid Shot's kind of good when you're not even getting the draw or setting up Leaf Lurker against like Greystone Ravager in this deck. He's already played a couple of those. And together, orcs. More Breakthrough. I wonder how much top end he's playing if he's playing Gortwog. Ew. I haven't seen this card since 2016, and I'm not even lying. But CVH, surely you've seen this card in 2017. Nope. Getting that out of the way right now, but we do have to kill it. It's kind of a scary card, even though it's like not very good. But it is good enough to kill, if that makes any sense. Uh, do I play the Spider Worker? I don't think so. Because then I have to use the ring for Rapid Shot Leaf Lurker. I guess he has Rapid Shot at first. It feels so bad to Leaf Licker this. Alright, alright. I think that's better. And trade the Slayer in instead. Keep my lethal alive. And since I have like one contract and one ring, I'm going to use the contract here because if there's any deck that could be playing Withered Hand Cultist, it's Orcs. Uh, you know, this deck typically plays little actions, if any, and I don't think he's playing Withered Hand Cultist. He's not really having the space as far as I can see with all the other interesting cards he's playing, like uh, this and the uh, the Rothgar Artisan. But just to uh, give a nod to Withered Hand Cultist, I'll use the contract there instead. Yeah, he's definitely not playing Cultus. He has no room for that. He's playing too many other cards that I personally don't think I'd be playing, but... Here, they're putting in some work. Attack the Spider... Actually, I don't even want him to attack Spider Worker. He has Breakthrough right now, so... Doesn't even benefit me too much there. Gambit is a hell of a draw. So we can Gambit over, ping that because it's a problem, trade... Uh, double trade, and then even Rapid Shot Leaf Lurker, the last thing, so I will get that draw in first. Do I want a Rapid Shot Leaf Lurker, or do I want an Elena? I'll save Elena for something big that I can't deal with, and when I don't need the card draw as much, I think. I want something to stick in the field lane. And then we Archer's Gambit it over... We're back over, I guess, because he used to be there. And uh, trade there. Trade there. Get the full clear. And we even have a snake tooth necklace in our hand to gain some life back. Still haven't found a Rothgar Forge, though. That would kind of be nice, considering we are playing a deck built around it. You get one shot. Make it good. That's unfortunate. That's more unfortunate. Well, I wouldn't have been dead to it either way. I do have to use my Taz cat here, I think.
And it does technically keep me alive. I don't think he's gonna be trading with it, so if we did draw another snake tooth necklace, that'd be very nice. But uh the clock is ticking. <laughs> so we healed for five, but then we gave him five. Alright, alright. Oh, I'm dead off the top. Feels bad. Nailbiter. I know the next card was going to be Forge, too. It's going to be Forge. You're going to get, like, Dwarven Armaments. Heal for seven. Uh, inches away. Alright, just going to ship these two. I think maybe keep Raiding Party. Could trade early. Could also just... Help us set up for Forge. Actually, I don't know. We have so many two drops we'd rather have than Raiding Party. We'll find a Raiding Party later. It's not the worst card to have in the opener, though. I am ready to join the circle. I think I'll do this now while I have the time. I might make him think I'm a Swindley's Market Archer. Don't know if he's playing it differently. Wow. And in he goes. I guess I can pet. That makes more sense than using Bat and two Nords. Guess it's gonna be a gambit, and I'll probably just pass after that. Don't want to use the ring charges here. Although getting out of bat early might be okay, like just playing it, smacking for three. I want to hold. Alright, that I will kill immediately because we can. It's a good thing I didn't use the last ring charge either. They dare face the blade mistress of so next turn we can even play Forge with the ring and uh, immediately get a charge. Our hand is like, this is the Rothgar Forge hand. This is the hand we were looking for after we stabilized last game that we never really found. We can already answer half of that, which is good. And maybe even the other half if the Nord Firebrand gets a good item. And we will definitely play the premium copy. Perfect. And this works with prophecies too on your opponent's turn. The first time you summon a creature each turn, so like this is his turn now. If he wanted to attack me and I got like a spider worker, it would indeed get a free item. And I can get another free item on my turn. And I still have an ample supply of charge creatures. Oh, these guys playing uh, the Withered End Cultists. Nice. I think I'll go for the bat, does that make sense? I could just play double- yeah, I'm just gonna go double fortune Nord, what am I talking about? It's too good. Oh, come on, get the attack we need. Get the- oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, well, Leaf Lurker is cute. I'll commit to the Leaf Lurker, I'll just do that now. He could like buff it up or something, or Earthbone Spinner, I don't know. I wanna take my chances, just wanna get the damage on it. Maybe get a prophecy here, that'd be super cool. Ah. A dark omen for you. There's a plan. There's always a plan. Oh my god. This got out of hand. Why didn't I just kill that last turn? Rothgar Forge is why. This is the RNG dependency that we were trying to not <laughs> lose to. Alright, so we're gonna bat, get double item, attack over the 4-4, because we're definitely gonna get two attack on two random items. It's gonna be huge. Even larger than that. All right, that's what we're talking about here. Nice. And let's just shackle the 4-4 uh, the because four four, it's going to deal the most damage. Drain for 7. Play a Leaf Lurker. Uh, that's shackled next turn. I mean, I could kill the turn after that. Yeah, that's probably right. The forest is The forest will not suffer your presence. 
dark omen for you. You won't spoil my plan. Kind of surprised they didn't take the value trade there, because I get the trade with the 3-2 now. And it's time for another giant bat. Probably. Oh my god, again with the embassy disguise. I mean, I could be worse, right? We got to actually silence that and then attack into it. That's so disappointing. <laughs> god. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this now. Uh, at least we're, like, in a good position this game. We'll see how they like someone who fights back. Dread Clan Fear? At rank one? Oh my god. What's happening? Alright, well, I'll probably Fighter's Guild and Archer's Gambit it over to kill the Clan Fear. Let's go ahead and get a giant Nord Firebrand. Loot. Alright, well, that does trade favorably. I guess I can throw this down over here, just in case he plays something in the field lane. But I'm feeling pretty good. We have a guard in the shadow lane, Earthbone Spinner in case he wants to play something over there. Got creatures to attack in the field lane. And we're still at 20. Yeah, that can pretty easily get silenced and killed a second Dread Clan for obviously. Oh! I'm just gonna go turn by turn. The triple Rothgar Forge action! This is why Cory likes the deck. We figured it out. We got a 4 mana 7 7, man. How about an 11 12 with guard? And an effect. And no overload. I can't believe he's still hanging on. Let's make a giant spider worker so no one ever doubts his potential again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ah. I wonder how long he's gonna up. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder how long he's gonna hang on. Apparently, exactly that long. <laughs>